So too many of us are like the slowly boiling frog, <laughs> unaware of the danger as the danger slowly increases. And by the time you're aware of the danger, it's too late. The gradual, ever-increasing concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. I first really woke up to the danger in the 2007 UN climate change report, where it became clear to me that uh, the science was unequivocal. It said as strongly as I'd ever seen it that the science was unequivocal, that human beings burning fossil fuels were, were causing enormous changes to the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Of course, human beings have been using liquid fuels to power their world through burning it for many decades and centuries. In fact, as a result of that, though, it produces pollutants and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and that is what is responsible for global warming. So what's the solution? We must displace fossil fuels uh, going forward. And you see on this slide examples of a portfolio of solutions that can be used today. There will be solutions that will be staged in over many years. And that will be great for the power industry, for electricity. However, Heavy-duty transportation such as ships and airplanes are still going to need liquid fuels, and liquid fuels have an energy density that is, that is unbeatable. And the question really is, uh, in this century, how are we going to produce those liquid fuels sustainably? So one way to think about it is to um, take inspiration from photosynthesis, what plants do. So plants take in sunlight, that's the energy they use to convert atmospheric carbon dioxide that they capture along with groundwater to produce their fuel through the process of photosynthesis. The fuel is sugar and it releases also oxygen. Ever since the 2007 climate change report that really got me going, I've turned my research to be thinking about how I can use my skills to develop catalysts, to discover catalysts that can do artificial photosynthesis. And the fact is, it's an extremely difficult problem because what we're trying to do is actually run combustion backwards. Human beings take liquid fuels, they burn them, and, and produce CO2 in water. And what we have to do now is figure out how to use renewables, re um, low or low carbon or zero carbon electricity, plus some magic catalyst to be able to make this happen. There are three ways in which we can do this. The one that you're seeing behind me is it uses concentrated sunlight to, on a mineral that essentially evolves oxygen, makes it oxygen hungry, then that can extract oxygen from water and CO2 to produce hydrogen and CO, for example, carbon monoxide, that then can be combined to make liquid fuels. The second way takes renewable electricity, agnostic as to what kind, and an electrocatalyst and then uses that to run combustion backwards, to take water and CO2 to hydrogen or to a liquid fuel. And the third way does it all at once. Very difficult if you try to do it all at once. But basically, we're looking for magic molecules and materials that can take in sunlight, absorb the sunlight, produce electricity like a solar cell, use that electricity to convert water and CO2 back to a liquid fuel. There are, in fact, a number of ways we can think about doing this, both distributed, like on rooftops for photoelectrocatalysts, or in a centralized station for concentrated solar synthesis, like you're seeing here. Electrocatalysis could actually be done in either way. So there are three possible ways to, to do this. The fact is that why, why, don't we, why aren't we doing it today? It's because the efficiency is too low. So there's a lot of research that still needs to be done in order to make the efficiency of any of these processes economic. The fact is that CO2 utilization in this way will displace fossil fuels in liquid fuels, but it won't solve the problem completely. Because in fact, what we absolutely have to do is be able to capture carbon um, and then store it eventually underground. And we have to do this at the gigaton scale, the billion ton scale, or it's not going to work. I want to stop the frog from being boiled. I want th that our beautiful Earth isn't boiling. And the way to do that is through this CO2 utilization, capture, and storage, but it's going to, going to require a lot of research and development to make that happen. Thank you.